everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on episode 16 of Monster. Um, so lots of things happened last episode. Uh, <laughs> Tim got hit by a car. There's a, a secret cult organization that's trying to make Johan the second Hitler, and they're led by a doctor, a creepy dude, and a guy with that's called Babyface. Um, you know... <laughs> And Nina has a gun strapped to her thigh. She wants to kill Johan. She's waiting for him to show up at this mansion. Tinma's there tied up. They don't know each other or in the same vicinity. And, well, we think. We're not sure where Tinma is exactly. We just know he's with Babyface and got the snot beat out of him. And is presumably tied to a chair and can't escape. And Nina's stuck in this mansion waiting on Johan. And she's discovered that there's a woman that's also in prison there as well. And so last episode was all about these characters having to make choices and deciding where their priorities lie. And it seemed like Nina maybe was gonna prioritize trying to save this woman over waiting on Johan. But I don't know if that's gonna be the case. That's gonna be what we end up with. How is Tinma getting out of this situation? Uh, Heckel is with Dieter right now and there's talks of this cult organization burning the Turkish district that they're into the ground. I, it just, it's a big basket of setup chaos. And looming in the background is the fact that Eva and Longe are just teaming up to take Tenma down. And um, I don't know, right? I don't know. At least the one woman that saw Tenma get hit by the car and taken away, like maybe she could be like, no, this isn't Tenma's fault. But I just, in my mind, think that all this chaotic stuff's going to happen and somehow it's going to be spun as being Tenma's fault. And I'm like, what do we do? But I, I'm so excited and really wanting to see what happens in this series. I remember when I started this, there was one of the patrons on Patreon in the Discord was like, oh, I'm on episode 17 right now. And I was like, oh, when will I get to that? And that's next episode. So almost there, right? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty excited, y'all, to see what is going to go down this episode. I hope you all are too. I have a comment before we start, though. Um, Pie Nut it was actually talking in the Discord. I'm um, talking about episode 13, that in um, Turkey, the doctors have a mandatory duty that they do um, after graduation where they typically go into a rural area or, a vis or a village that needs doctors, and they have to serve a certain amount of time working in that location. Um, obviously, it seems like it would be to build up experience and to kind of like, you don't just start out at the Grand Central Hospital, you build up experience in the small rural areas and you get a multitude of different patients and different ailments and things to diagnose, and then you work your way up to the hospital. So that was rather interesting. And Pine Nut also said that people show their appreciation for these doctors through food or gestures. So it's curious because we've established there's a large Turkish population in Germany. And so in episode 13, in this rural area, it's likely that a lot of the population there are Turkish and that them giving the food and stuff to Schumann might have been um, just a common courtesy. And Schumann, you know, being the Sundere doctor that he was, was like, no, I'm fine. You know, like that. But I thought that was really cool. So thank you, Pine Nut, for pointing that out. I like these little cultural aspects that are being brought up in this series. <laughs> Last episode had a lot of it. So, uh, yeah. We're going to see what, gonna, what could happen. I, I say... I have no clue going to this episode, like what's going to happen with Nina. Will Johan show up? Is Nina and Tinma gonna meet each other? Are they gonna like cross paths but not know each other is there? That would be really annoying, but I could see it happening. I am going into this episode having no idea where we're going and it's kind of exciting. So we're gonna find out, right? We're gonna start episode 16 of Monster and just see what happens. And we're gonna do that here in three, two, one, and let's do this. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh, oh I, mm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait a week to find out what happens in episode 17. So I'm sorry for y'all. But <laughs> What in the world? Oh my God. I, mm, oh man, this is. This is getting pretty good, and uh, oh, the the creep factor in this episode was just like tick, 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 just cranking it up. And I know what y'all are saying. You're like, oh, we're only 16 episodes in. We've got like 
we've got like 58 more to go. There's going to be a lot of creepy stuff happen in Romania. Don't you worry. And, but just, oh, I'm glad Dieter was in this episode to be a little bit of levity, even though I'm like, I want to like be around Dieter and like protecting him from all angles because I'm terrified for him. I'm like, Dieter, I'm worried about your son. You're just a kid. You need an adult. And Tinma is so obsessed with Johan and Heckle is not the adult that I'm like, I, Dieter needs Nina. If Nina wasn't in constant danger herself, she'd be the adult for Dieter. But, oh my God, this episode. And just adding to the mystery of Johan with Wolf and just adding to, I brought White Boar Coon out. I, I really wanted White Boar Coon just to help break down where we're at with all the players on the board because this this just took out like half of them in this one episode and again Johan just did it because he wants for whatever reason he needs Nina for something and once Tenma it seems like he's luring Tenma as well I, mm, I just he was in the house with her Johan was in the house with her the whole time but he wanted to lure her to the roof for a reason why? I'm just, why? Because, yeah, he had to have been in the house with Nina. Why didn't he go get her? If he really needed her, why? Why does he have to lure her to the tower? He Does he want Timma to be there? At the, what is the purpose? I'm just... And I don't want y'all to tell me. I don't want you, but it's just so frustrating because Johan was clearly in the house with her, which is the creepiest thing, and he didn't do anything to her, but he wants her for some reason. So what the fudge, monster? Ah, there's reasons, and I'm sure we'll find out what they are, but God, this episode was creepy. It was just tension upon tension, and I feel so bad for Aisha. Like, Aisha, she was just wanting to get out of there to get back to her kid, and she ends up getting killed. Now, they said that the, the woman died. The woman died at the hands of Gildit's men. It wasn't Johan that killed her. I'm like, how do you know? How do you know? Did Johan tell you he wasn't going to kill Turkish women? What? How did you know that that's the case? Because I figured it was Johan, but clearly not. I'm just like, ugh. So, Okay. We got to establish where people are. Nina is at the tower where there's something mysterious happening and I need to see what this is. So that's probably why I'm not going to wait a week because I want to see what's up with this tower. Um, Tinma is headed there. And we're going to get the actual name of this place too here in a second. But Tinma is on his way there. Uh, Tinma has been hired by Wolf, quotation marks, to kill Johan because Johan has killed all he knows. Which is quite ominous because it's suggesting that Tinma is going to, like everyone around Tinma, Johan is going to try to kill or uproot as well. So if that is the case, and we're looking at that, then, then we have a whole bunch of people that are in trouble. We have Nina, which I think Nina's only saving grace is that she is the sibling. So I think that might be her out. But then you have Eva, and then you have Dieter, and then you have Becker, if he's still even around. He may already be dead. But I feel like they're all going to be targets of Johan. Now, the thing with Eva is where does that position Lunge since he's working with her and how is that going to affect how he targets Tenma? Because here's kind of the weird thing about this is that the introduction of a third party that wants Tenma to kill Johan makes this really interesting because it's like, okay, well, this third party has hired Tenma to go kill Johan, who is presumably we suspect it's not going to be that simple at the tower but then Lungay doesn't even believe Johan exists. So is this third party hiring Tenma, is that going to prove to Lungay and Eva that Tenma's not off his rocker, that there actually is a Johan? But then the thing about that is, is that Wolf has already established, she's like, it's just a name. Like what if Wolf disappears from the story and we find out that he was just it, just a name. Like he didn't actually, the general wolf we thought existed never existed. And Lunge is like, there is no by name General Wolf. And Tim was like, what? So I just, I'm my big 
question mark is going to be if Ten, if Lunge finds out about Wolf and Wolf believes that Johan is real and that proves that Johan is real, what do we do with that? I, I don't know that there's a lot of there's a lot of loose threads like the like the web is getting bigger and bigger, but the threads are getting thinner and thinner. And I'm like, I don't know what to think. And meanwhile, we have Dieter in all of this. Dieter, who is who was with Tinma. I'm glad he got out of there. But he found his way back to Heckle, who is not on my good list this episode. Heckle did some bad stuff this episode. I was defending him last episode. Now he's on my shit list. And they're supposed to go to warn the Turkish district. Right? Where the woman was from that Nina was going to save and be friends with. So I I'm wondering if Dieter and Nina will have a common connection if she, because she was going, she was going to save, to warn the town, but then like Tinma, she got caught up with this mystery of finding Johan and went there instead. So I'm like, <sighs> Dieter's the only one staying on track to save everybody and he's a kid. It's like, come on guys. I'm like, Nina, Tinma, I know y'all are obsessed with Johan, but there's like people about to die. We'll go, go save them. Save that tower for later. He's just trying to, he's just probably going to troll you anyway. That's the thing too. Like, it almost seems like Johan is trying to prevent Nina from going to warn the Turkish dis district so they'll burn because he's, he could have seen her back at the mansion. He didn't have to lead her to a tower unless he's trying to get her and Timma to get there at the same time. Then, then what? Then what do we do? But yeah, Timma was correct that Johan, Johan does not care about leading people. He just wants to destroy. He wants to watch the world burn, as Michael Caine would have said in Batman in The Dark Knight. Re returns so yeah so basically Aisha tells her about the fire that's gonna start that she's worried about her kid and she's concerned and she wants her to go save her right now this whole part with Heckle I was so mad at Heckle at this point because he's all obsessed about this rug and he's like, oh, well, this is just, he's like, we should try to steal it. There's no point in them having this rug and not knowing its value. And Dieter's just not having it. Dieter's like, you're not a good man. You're a thief. You're a liar. And I like that Heckle says, well, don't glare at me like that. I'm an adult. And I instantly thought of the Lonely Island, like the song, I threw it on the ground. Like Heckle's like, I threw it on the ground. And Dieter's just like, and he's like yelling at Dieter's face and Dieter's hair is blowing back. And he's like, welcome to the real world, jackass. Like that just seems like Heckle's song. But it's just, Heckle is not being an adult. He is being a kid. And Dieter's calling him out on it. He's like, you're a thief. And then Heckle leaves him. And I'm like, look, Heckle, this is a child. Like an eight-year-old kid. You're a grown-ass man. Deal with this kid. Tinma put you in charge of him. Why are you leaving him? Now, by twist of fate or lady luck as Heckle would call it, Dieter manages to get incredibly lucky and finds Tinma, figures out about the town burning, and goes off to do something. Like, Dieter may become the hero, hopefully, of the whole damn city, and he's the eight-year-old kid. He has to be the responsible one amidst all of these Cretans, right? And then he manages by, by twist of fate, I feel like Dieter is like the luckiest kid in this series so far because by twist of fate he runs into the woman that saw Timma with the Turkish woman's baby and she is kind enough to take in Dieter and give him some food. What's amazing is she didn't realize who Timma was but then I guess it makes sense she didn't put two and two together and realize that maybe there's not that many Asian people in this in this German neighborhood because Dieter's just like that sounds like it could be Timma and wants to find out where he is. And what does he tell her? What does she say? She's like, oh, well, you said Timo's Japanese, didn't you? And of course, well, it couldn't be him. And he's like, where's this place? I, and she lets him go, which I mean, it's no skin off her back. She gave him some food. But then we go back to the mansion where Nina is being held. And then if she hadn't gone back for that scarf, she wouldn't have ended up that way. What I was amazed by was that as Aisha is being killed, then she like, like Nina did not hear, Nina didn't hear her, Nina didn't hear her like through the pipes or like the guy didn't hear her through the pipes, right? That's the amazing thing about it. 
And then we cut back to Babyface. Now, Babyface, as far as we know, we know that Gil, uh, Gilditz is dead. Um, we don't know whether well, it was Wolf, Gilditz. Uh, Babyface is still around as far as we know, right? We don't know what's going to happen with Babyface. He's still around. He didn't go back with the others, although his henchmen died. Man, that was the creepiest thing when it cut to, like, as Timma, like, got on to him... Because he, he says that his excellency, Wolf, like Wolf is well respected amongst them. He's like the second in command aside from Johan, right? And I love, I love Timma like getting like up with his bloody face. Timma being like, he's not going to buy into your ideas of racial superiority. Because here's the point of it all. It's like, I love that it just closes in. I want to get a picture of that on Timma's face. Where he's like, no, Johan sneers at all of humanity. Johan doesn't like any of you. That's the problem. That's what Tim is saying. Because Tim is suggesting that, you know, if Johan was an extremist, that still means he's a human extremist. That means there's a chance of talking with him and reasoning with him and understanding him. Tim is suggesting there's no way of understanding Johan because he doesn't care for any of humanity. Doesn't care for anybody. Now, whether that's entirely true or not, I, mm, I don't know. Johan seems to be keeping Tenma and Nina alive for reasons. Uh, there's a thing. If Johan didn't care for any humanity, why didn't he kill Nina when she was there in the house? Why didn't he kill her? He clearly either cares for his sister, genuinely, or he's planning on using her for something. But it's so complicated and mysterious with his character. And then, when, But when... the Timma says that it cuts immediately to baby faces. And that's the creepiest thing I've ever seen. That right there is disturbing. Like, why? I'm not ready to see that in the manga. I feel like it's just going to be a giant page. But, and he whacks him over the head with the stick. Oof. Now, I, Dieter going into the bar and like half the guys are like watching him walk in, this eight-year-old kid. And the other guys are like, come on, kid, what are you doing? And they try to poke fun. Like the bartender's like, well, we don't see much of your type here. And the one guy says, oh, give him my usual. And Dieter, Dieter ain't playing around. He is not. Dieter is like, I came here to get Timma and kick ass, right? He came, he's like, I came here to kick ass, get Timma and chew bubble gum and I'm all out of bubble gum. So it's like, I, mm, this moment where he gives him, gives him the drink. I was a little afraid because I was afraid they might have done something to the drink, but they didn't. It's just liquor. And they all look at him like, what are you going to do, kid? And he just takes it and he just drinks it. Like the whole thing. I mean, he throws it back up later. And they're all just like, oh. And then he walks out. Has the cherry thing in his mouth. I was like, what a freaking badass kid. Dieter, what the hell? And that bartender. That bartender saying, oh, the girl's impressed, and he goes, he's going to be turned out to be a bad one. That's so insane, right? That the bartender, the bartender saying, he's going to be a bad one. When he's the one that's actively doing the right thing and trying to save the city. I mean, maybe a bad one in their perspective, maybe. But Dieter's like the only one trying to help the people of the town right now. Nina and Tinma have been currently distracted. I just, and oh my God, the shadows, again, the shadows in this episode, the shadows of Dieter on top of the stairwell and there's shadows on the stairs as it goes down into the basement. This show and the damn shadows, I just, I can't, I can't y'all. It's too much. And then when he turns around, there's that man behind him. I was not, not prepared. I was like, as soon as we saw that guy behind him just standing there creepily, mm-mm. Nope. I this there's too much. I'm easily scared and there's a lot of scary imagery in this. And so Nina manages to find out about Calvin Street as Dieter has and is told by the woman and the woman's like, "Well, you're the first friend I've made in this new country." And I'm like, "Famous last words." As Nina's like, "Well, let's meet when I come to get you out of there." And I'm like, "That's not going to happen." And then at that point, she's like, "Only bad things have happened to me since I've come to Germany." And she says, I finally met a nice person. We're friends, aren't we? 
and then Nina says, tell me what's your boy's name? And that's when she doesn't hear her anymore. Uh, and that's when that gargling sound comes out because she's being like drowned in the toilet. Oh my God. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And man, just the sound design of the show is so creepy. And again, Nina, Nina just, just grabbing that gun. She didn't even grab the gun when she went upstairs and just like these doors being open. It's like a horror movie. And then she sees that she's been drowned. Ugh. And so then this guy comes onto the picture and says, where's Wolf? And they're like, he's at another location. And then Dieter shows up saying he was looking for Tenma. And now the one guy, it makes sense why they don't want Dieter to get killed because they want Tenma to cooperate. And so they take Dieter as well, being like, okay, well, you'll cooperate if this kid comes too, right? Right? So that's why they want him to come as well. And I like that at first Tenma did not want to admit that he knew Dieter because he wanted Dieter to be let go. He didn't want to associate Dieter with him so that he would have a chance to get away. But these guys were like, well, if he's not associated with Tenma, we'll just kill him. And then for the one dude just to like, just to straight up shoot him, it's, it's a bit interesting because they just straight up murder the henchman of the baby face guy. And meanwhile, Johan just straight up kills everybody in the mansion except Nina. It's a bit weird. But man, her going room to room with the gun and all of them are dead. Nope. That's a big old. And then I love that the one creepy guy, Gilditz, like was dead at the table. And then we see the fruit and the pears have been knocked over with the dragon fruit next to it. Creepy, creepy, creepy. And she's like, they're all dead. And so then the one guy reveals to Timma that Nina's supposed to be at the mansion. And poor Dieter's asking about a Turkish lady. And they're like, we don't know. And so Dieter, he's like, we have orders to take you with us. And D and then that's when Timma's like, okay, let the kid out. And and I love that Dieter's like, Timma, you did. Dieter, Timma, you're going to save us. And then, of course... Of course, Tenma's like, I need to go find out about Johan. Let him go. Which it kind of makes sense in hindsight that Tenma was like, these guys, I've just seen him murder a man in front of me. They'd probably shoot this kid if they needed to. I need to get Dieter out of here. And so, but him telling Dieter to hitchhike, I mean, granted, that is the better advice to get to the town fast enough. But I'm like, luckily this kid's lucky and doesn't run into some creep hitchhiking. I'm like, ugh. Like he didn't run into Hartman on the side of the road or something, right? But I'm telling him to go. And what's interesting is that Tinma, he says, you wouldn't have stopped to let us out if I hadn't pulled something like that. Like, I'm sorry I had to resort in violence and I betrayed that trust that you gave me in letting me keep my gun. Because, yeah, them letting him keep the gun is pretty significant. And I like the one guy says, well, good. You know that guns aren't just accessories. So I, I feel like they were testing to see if Timmo would be capable of being somebody to go track down Johan. But what a, what a gamble. What a very weird gamble, right? Right? And so they make it to the house and Wolf and them comment how Gilditz and all of them are dead. And then enter, enter Wolf in the chair creepily with his back turned to the audience and this beautiful vase of flowers there. What the hell? And then we have this giant psychological discussion. He says, all his men are dead and we've disposed of the bodies. And he says, you might not notice me, but I'm Wolf. And he does look like the picture. It's just in the last 10 years, he's aged considerably. I do believe that it's Wolf. I do believe that it's him. He's just aged a lot. Yeah, he's just, he's aged since handling handling Johan and then he says it's been fear fear has aged me oh that's so creepy the idea that he's been so fear-stricken that it's aged him 
Which, you know, you take, like, the presidents in the U.S., you see them, like, when they take office and then when they leave, they starkly look different. Look different. I'm sure it's, like, the fear of everything and every decision they make over and over again over a period of time all accumulating and all the stress, right? And he's saying that this fear and stress has aged him, right? But he has this whole big philosophical thing about names, right? He wants to be, he says this whole thing about names, and he's the one who gave Johan his name. And we don't know what his name was before then. We don't know. The one thing that I'm kind of mad that he doesn't talk about is he doesn't ever go into detail about Nina and why she was sent to a different orphanage. They don't ever really talk about that in this episode. They don't talk about why they separated the twins. They just, they did, and that's all that we know, right? I mean, it could be something as simple as they didn't think she would become a soldier like Johan, so they sent her away somewhere else. I don't know. But then we cut back to Dieter and this poor man. What I love is he's in the cart with the man. And he's like, can't you go any faster? And the guy's like, we're going 200 kilometers per hour. And the meter's broken. And he's almost out of gas. Like the, the, the odometer's broken. The fuel gauge says they're close to empty. Like Dieter's like, come on, man. We're not going to make it in time. Bless his heart. Now, we cut back to the tiny primroses. The little primroses that are on the table. Right? And they're orange and like pink. They're orange and pink, which orange is usually symbolically a cautious color. It means hazard. It means to take heed and warning. And the pink is like a mixture of red and white, which is a curious symbolism that you could say from it. He says a person's name is a mysterious thing. Getting all philosophical. People who know me know that I am wolf. But... As for the people who don't know me, I have to tell them that I am wolf. So there, there's a curious thing here where he talks about how how we recognize how we are recognized by our name, but have to learn it, right? Suggesting that he's like, maybe I'm wolf, maybe I have a real other name, maybe my real name's not wolf, maybe it's been a fake name this whole time. You'll never know, ha ha ha. My fear is that he's gonna die. And that we're, we're going to find out his name wasn't Wolf, that the man Wolf never existed. And Lunge is going to have like yet another dead angle to be like, well, Timma, are you sure that you had all these extra things around you? Because there's no by our records named Wolf. So how do we know you were working for a third party? Right? That's my fear. My fear is that Timma is going to try to say, well, I was hired by this third party to go after Johan. And then it's going to come out that there was no third party. There is no man named Wolf. It was all made up, and the real man, who, whatever his name is, we don't know as the audience, and we'll never know. And it's just... <laughs> I want to go like get that bag of Werther's out now and eat them all. But he tells Tenma that where's the proof that I am Wolf? He mentions his bank statements, but do his bank statements really do anything? And Tim was like, I didn't come here to like have a philosophical debate with you, sir. I came here to know about Johan. He's like, were you the first one to find him? And he talks about when they were found at the border 12 years ago. And he admits that he's like, yeah, this whole cult thing, I, I don't care. <laughs> he's like, I don't care about the cult. He's like, they're just a means to an end. They were a means to bring Johan to me so I could kill him. Well, he already beat us here and has killed most of the members of the cult, so... That plan's kind of out now. Now we need you to go find him. You kind of have a similar vested interest like we do. Maybe you can do the job, whereas we have failed. Because Wolf says that he's lost everyone close to him because of Johan. But I do appreciate that Wolf has not... Wolf did not drink the Kool-Aid in the sense that he thought Johan was going to be this, like, second coming of Hitler. He's like, no, that's not... He's, he said, Hitler had limits. I was like, oh, God, you're saying Johan's going to be worse than Hitler. Great. Great. It's like he's suggesting Hitler was still human, whereas Johan is anything but. Oh my god. He's like, I gave him the name Johan. And I'm not gonna lie. I mean, granted, the thing about it is, they came and it shows Johan had a bag. Now what's in the bag? We don't know. But it shows that they came from the Czechoslovakian border, the two of them, and they were cold and nearly starved to death. So, what that implies where they had been, what they had seen, we don't know at this point. But I'm going to be honest, the image of him in the hospital looking up at Wolf and he answers saying, you'll know soon how I feel. And he just is sitting there all angelic 
looking freaking disturbing, looking like the perfect little angel, like he's never done anything wrong in his life. But the fact that he said, you will know soon how I feel, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, that's a big old, big old pile of nope, <laughs> right there, right? Ah! No, mm-mm, not feeling it, Cotton, not feeling it. <sighs> yeah, that's just a bit much, a bit much. I, mm. But yeah, and so then he says that they, he says, all the people I've known have disappeared from this world one after another. My wife and children, my siblings and relatives, my henchmen, my friends, they've all died. I, that's so disturbing. I'm like, uh, mm -mm. he's like, Johan has killed all of them. Like, it's just like he took his revenge on everyone surrounding him. But the creepy thing is, is that he acknowledges that Wolf, he's like, I saved him just like you did. He's like, I saved this kid just like you did, and here's what's happened. Now, there's a big difference. Tenma didn't try to convert him into the leader of a cultish organization, whereas we think Wolf might have. But the fact of the matter is, he's like, just because you saved Tenma... And it's weird, because Tenma... What I'm curious about is, did Johan ever say to Wolf that Wolf was like a parent to him? Because he said that to Tenma. Has he said that to Wolf? I don't know. I'm not sure if that's, if that's not seeming to have happened. So is there a difference between, is there a difference between Wolf and Tenma in terms of that? I, I don't know. But Tenma's pretty disturbed by this conversation. He's like, the only way I can prove that I'm Wolf is through the sum of money I kept when I escaped from East Germany. And like, the other guys like help him up with his cane like he's so feeble. It just, ugh. And then he leaves. People believe that I'm Wolf, but no one really knows me. So yeah, so, and that kind of applies to Tenma as well. People believe that he's Tenma, but do they really know him? I, ah! It's just the tension of this episode. And he's like, you, you understand now, this is the meaning behind the word. Solitude. So he's establishing that both he... This idea of solitude that both he and Tenma, he's basically suggesting that Johan has singled them out and that he and Tenma are doomed to be alone. And I'm like, I don't like where this is headed. Not one bit. Not one bit. And Tenma's like, okay. And then we go to the message. Uh, Johan loves leaving messages on that wall. He just loves to leave those messages, doesn't he? And then we see his other message. Um, Kam zum Platz in Romberg, Rafur das Lagerhaus, der Hilden in Ingels, Gimpstand. I, okay. Meaning that he, I'll be waiting at the ruins of the Hilden and Ingels warehouse in Romberg. Hmm. Okay. And he thinks that this is where Nina saw the message and was going there as well. Okay. And then we come back to Heckle and Heckle and Dieter. And I'm like, Heckle is being the worst person. Like I've stood up for you, Heckle, but you need to grow a heart because Dieter's like, we need to go warn these people. And Heckle's like, well, this is perfect. We'll just grab the rug while the Turkish district's burning. And Dieter's like, I wanted Dieter to kick him in the balls so bad. I was literally waiting for it. Cause Dieter's like, why are you the way that you are? I love that Dieter just looks at him like, why are you being awful? Like, I love this kid. He's like, you fire cloaked thief. And he's like, don't say it out loud. I'll, we'll be in for it. And he's like, let go of me. And he says, not just the people of the town. If the extremists hear that, we'll be dead. And he's like, let go. And so he's like, especially those skinheads with swastika tattoos. And so the question is, uh, these guys that look like skinheads, are they going to beat up Heckle and let Dieter go? Or are they going to get both of them in trouble? I don't know. I feel like they're going to let Dieter go and beat up Heckle, which Heckle kind of deserves it at this point. But then Tinma loads up his gun, puts it back up, and the guys there at the window, they, oh, and he asked about the Turkish woman, and they said that one of Gildit's men killed, him, killed her. So at least we can, at least Tinma can tell Dieter and wrap up that thread, right? 
and the one woman might end up with the baby. Maybe. And then he just leaves. Like, he just looks emotionless. Like, Timma just looks emotionless. Like, damn it. And they say, do you think he'll be able to kill Johan? And he's like, I don't know. But it might not be too late for him. So, uh, now I love that we have the cross over his face too, like we've had with Eva and Timma so far in this series. The idea that it might not be too late for him. I guess Wolf is suggesting that it's too late for him to kill Johan. He's he's at the point where he can't do it anymore, right? But is he saying it may not be too late for him to kill Johan? Or is he saying it may not be too late for him to run away and get away from Johan? I, I don't know. I don't know. And then T. Oh, oh girl. Oh, girl Nina. She like, she has a history of running up to these towers on top of these buildings where, girl, Johan has tricked you twice into coming up to the top of a building. Like, what, she would be surprised at this point. I love Nina's character, but I'm like, girl, what we doing? And then she gets to the top of the tower and sees whatever, and then that's the episode. This episode was so good, but I'm like, I need more. <laughs> I need more, damn it. And we're not getting it. So I'm like, what do I do? Ah, just, mm -mm. I don't know what to do with this, y'all. I can't wait. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I, I want to watch the next episode so badly because I want to know what is going to happen, but... I, just the idea that now Wolf is involved and Wolf wants Johan dead and wants Timma to kill him and is maybe not who he seems and all this stuff is, it's all still ramping up. I'm just, okay. Okay. So yeah, I, mm, I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below. Please, no spoilers, but I'm curious to know what you thought of this episode and its insanity. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I, I'll i be back um, next week with episode 17 of Monster.